Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new tactics video and today it is going to be the big one. It's going to be the Pep Clop combined. It's an insanely popular tactic that I done last year and all I've been seeing from the start of this game is can I recreate it and that's exactly what I've done today. So if you guys are looking forward to this, you like these tactic videos, be sure to leave a like on the video and please do subscribe. We're trying to hit 5k, that is the next real big milestone. It's completely free and it does mean a lot. Let's get in to the testing phase of this tactic. So then, guys, as you can see, the first test is going to be with Liverpool. Now, we're going to start off by breaking down the results and have a little talk about how this tactic sort of works and exactly what you can expect. But to start with, I want to quickly make this very known that we did test with Liverpool and Manchester City only because that is the two managers combined. I didn't want to test with Barcelona, which I could have done with Pep or I could have done with Dortmund, but it's because... Currently, these are the two managers are based around. I'm trying to merge both of the current club's play styles into one tactic. Do I think this tactic will work with any team? Yes, because it's a very popular formation that can't really go wrong, and it's got some fantastic traits. But we're going to start off then with Liverpool. Obviously, probably at the moment, you wouldn't say they're the second favourite to win the Premier League, but on this game, their team is incredible. In my opinion, probably got the best backline in the Prem. I really am very fond of Liverpool's defence on this game, especially the fullbacks. They really do suit how I like to go forward, and they're really, really good in my opinion. But we absolutely thumped this division. 103 points, 132 goal difference over Manchester City, scoring 142 goals and only conceding 10. We also managed to win the Champions League against AC Milan. We also won the FA Cup against Brentford, the Carabao Cup against United, and the Community Shield at the start of the season against Manchester City, which makes it, it's a, you know, a five trophy season, guys. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Roberto Firmino with 59 goals, Mo Salah with an 8.3 average rating with 47 assists, and Virgil van Dijk with the best pass completion. Now, one thing I really noticed about this team, and obviously I know we tested with good teams, so you are going to see a lot of goals come in from these players, but Every single player in that attacking area of the field really did get involved. And I think it's because they have got freedom to do so. They link up well with each other. And obviously the midfield also contributes. You've got two fullbacks that get involved as well. So a lot of chances do get created going forwards. But obviously, because we've also got a rock solid defence, we didn't even concede much either. Now, if you are going to use this with a Brentford and Everton and a Wolves, then I believe you're still going to get these goals. But you might concede a few more here and there. But overall, I believe this tactic can be used across the board with pretty much whatever team. We're going to go into the data hub quickly and we're going to look at team attacking 3.74, which is absolutely incredible for the Premier League with nearly an 89% pass completion. Team defending 0.26, which is one of the lowest I've actually seen in the Premier League. I believe there was one I had a 0.16, which was, I believe, in the English League 2. I remember having a ridiculous stat line, um, which was really, really impressive. But that was a five at the back, to be fair. So, I mean, overall, very happy with how this tactic sort of shapes up. Exactly the, the results. I mean, I literally can't argue because we've won everything and quite convincingly as well. Um, so, Liverpool test successfully complete. Now, we're going to go over to the Pep side and we are going to see exactly how they've done. Hopefully, it's going to be the same. Um, I'm trying to think in my head now, so there's a little pause. What team do I think is going to do better on paper? And although I've just really hyped up Liverpool's defence, Man City have got an incredible midfield and incredible attack. So I'd be... I think we're going to see a very similar sort of pattern. Well then, guys, we are pretty much seeing the same sort of story. This time, we also managed to win the Premier League. We won the Champions League against Inter Milan, the FA Cup and the Community Shield. Unfortunately, not the Carabao. Manchester United, obviously the biggest rival we can possibly face, did take that trophy off us. We did score 159 goals and we conceded five more than Liverpool, but only 15 for the entire season. Erling Haaland, I mean, this guy's flawless. The best striker in the game, in my opinion, 110 Goals, absolutely incredible. Bernardo Silva with 39 assists. Edison, the best pass completion, obviously very known for that. The Premier League, we made a little bit of a mockery, to be honest. Absolutely dominated Liverpool, dominated Manchester United, Newcastle. I mean, Leicester having a very off season there. I mean, they're not exactly doing the best right now. But that aside, again, I'm very, you know, this tactic always works because you literally are combining 
two fantastic game styles and putting it into one. What I try and do is the first thing I think of when I think of Pep, I think slow build up, possession, elegant football. I think of Klopp, heavy metal, high press, in your face, aggressive football. Combined in the middle, magic. Sometimes difficult to do, but at the end of the day, we, we managed to do it at last FM. There was no reason why we couldn't do it on this one, and I believe we've successfully done it. We're going to go into the data hub, then team attacking, 4.18, so more goals. That is to be expected. They do have the better attack, in my opinion. Surely based off Erlen Haaland alone, I mean, this guy in FM is an absolute glitch. He really is. Team defending, 0.39, so still ridiculously solid easily under a goal a game and score on over four. So, and I will say that is to be expected from Man City. I know I can already see some of the comments. Um, seems to be a thing in the FM scene where you can upload a tactics video and even if it's specifically made for top teams, they're still like, well, it's got to get good results. Guys, there's a big difference. You can have teams designed, sorry, you can have tactics designed for top teams, underdog teams, sub middle teams, sub top, whatever you want to say. This tactic is tested with top teams purely based off the fact that Klopp manages Liverpool, Pep manages Man City. I'm taking the game style that Liverpool have from Klopp and the game style that Man City have from Pep and combining them. I genuinely do believe this tactic would work with other with other teams as well, but do let me know in the comments exactly what team you're going to be using this with and let me know the results you sort of get because I do like to respond to your comments. So what we're going to do now is we are going to pick a couple of games, um, probably one from Liverpool, probably one from City, and we're going to watch some of the goals. So the first one is going to be the FA Cup final against Chelsea, and it was a very comfortable 4-1 win, if I don't say so myself. Bernardo Silva initially starts off the scoring with a great corner into a Kanji who tucks it into the bottom left corner. Chelsea do bounce back here by the looks of it, though, with Mason Mount on the ball into Chabala. Takes his time, a beautiful ball over the top into Kai Havertz. And to be honest, that's just, a, I mean, it's a fantastic ball. I've got to give him credit. But one thing we don't do in this tactic is give up. We always bounce back, and that is exactly what we do here. Kyle Walker on the edge of the box, where he should be in this system. A ball back into Rodrigo, takes it. He doesn't take his time. I thought he actually took a touch there. He hits it first time into the top left corner. Now, we are going to be watching a lot of games, so don't panic. We are going to be seeing the Champions League finals as well. But this is just one of the games I really had to show you because it's another final and there's quite a few goals. João Cancelo here going out to the right-hand side. Look at Haaland in the middle. As easy as that, guys. The reason why I don't get excited is because of the amount of goals you score. You can't celebrate all of them. And when you've got a team like this and you've got a system like this, which gets every single player involved creating chances, it's just a joy to watch there. And Chilwell with the ball here into Thiago Silva, who did drop a stinker, by the way. And it's a gift of goal to Bernardo Silva. He's never going to miss that one, is he? And we're going to see Thiago Silva here. It's probably going to be one of his last games he's going to play. As you can see here, a very solid performance. Chelsea, 5.6 from Thiago Silva. It's a bit of a disappointing final. It was a game we definitely deserved to win, as you can see here from the stats. The only thing which we didn't have in this game was the possession, which does surprise me a little bit because a lot of the other games we had at least sort of 59, 62, around that sort of ballpoint. But overall, still a very convincing final. We then go into the Champions League final with Manchester City against Inter Milan with their five at the back, which in my opinion, whenever they roll this system, I always can beat them because they just don't really play well under it. So... I was quite excited when I got into Milan because I was very confident we could beat them and we did that quite convincingly. Another set piece to go 1-0 up. It's going to be Bernardo Silva into Erling Haaland. We then go again with João Cancelo on the left this time. It's a very poor clearance. Jack Grealish, a wonder ball through into Phil Foden who squares it into Haaland. And that's the short passing coming in, guys. The unselfishness, the creating the perfect goal. That's exactly what we are about. And that is the pep side of things coming in. Kyle Walker, another dodgy clearance from a Serbi into Rodrigo who hits it again. It's very lucky into Foden. And oh, wow, that is one of the jammiest goals I think I've actually seen. Let me know what you think of that state in the comments, because that is a very dodgy goal. A very lucky build-up, and then it come off the post, and it's an open goal for Grealish. But it's an interesting one. We go again, Kyle Walker down the right-hand side. Going forward, great progress into Bernardo Silva, who hits it himself this time, and tucks it into the bottom left-hand corner. And do you know what? It was a game which we definitely 100% deserve to win. I mean, 3.1 XG, 23 shots, 9 on target, more possession, everything about it I'm a big fan of. And 
This Inter Milan team here, again, full strength side, just a five at the back doesn't really work for them, in my opinion. Whenever I play them, I can always sort of go one up. And when a stat, when you go one up, one up, sorry, against a five at the back system, especially when you're playing the AI, it's quite an easy, quite an easy game from then onwards. So let's go and watch some of the Liverpool games now. Or I'll try and do a game, but possibly the Champions League final, and we'll see what we can see going forward with Salah, Firmino, and Diaz. So then, guys, this is going to be the Champions League final as Liverpool against AC Milan. Quite funny, we actually matched up against both Milans, AC Milan into Milan. This one, again, was quite comfortable as Milan did go down to actually 10 men at some stage in this game. We do take the lead here. Fabino into Jordan Henderson, who drives forward and actually puts the ball over the top there into Salah, who is so clinical from that right-hand side. And that is a very easy goal to pretty much be given. Henderson had loads of space in that midfield. He could just drive and drive and finds the ball over the top into Salah, who isn't going to miss from there. We go again then with Trent, a ball in the box into Matip. And again, it's, you've got to question the keeping. Some, some, of these, some of these goals that are going in, the keeping is absolutely shocking. Um, but we'll take it nevertheless. We then have Cater going into Firmino. Again, very lucky there. And again, I'll question the keeper again. Megan not having a great display at all there. Sort of two goals, which I think he could have prevent us quite easily and again as you can see it is going to be the link up of Diaz, Firmino, Salah, Thiago, Henderson, Fabino, Trent, Matip, Van Dijk, Robertson and Allison. Milan side a very good side actually. Megan I don't know how he got a 7.9 um probably because we dominated ridiculously so 20 they had a really poor display um we had 65 percent of the ball but again they did go full strength no severe injuries there Hernandez dropping an awful performance and a very convincing win. That leaves us with one more job, and that is to break down the Jürgen Guardiola, the Jürgen, the Jürgen Guardiola FM23 tactic. Now, the one thing I want to get right off the bat is, ideally, you would be playing with a false nine, and I did with Liverpool because Firmino plays it very well. The Man City Haaland cannot play it, so I had to play him as a complete forward. Now, this is something you can tweak as you go along. Um, if you cannot honestly play a false nine because it worked really well. But if you're, if you're like City, for example, and Haaland, who obviously you need to be playing, isn't comfortable, he's actually a two-star in a false nine, then you can slightly adapt it for your tasting. But we're going to start off then with a positive mentality. In possession, you want to have attack and whip set to fairly wide, pass into space, overlap left and right, play out of defence, shorter on the pass and directness, a higher tempo, be more expressive, run at defence and mix crosses. In transition, you want to have counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the centre backs and the full backs and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement, trigger presses on much more often and prevent short goal keeper distribution and also get stuck in. Now, what we're seeing from these sections alone is the mix of Pep and the mix of Klopp. We're seeing the intense pressing style that Klopp offers and also the shorter passing approach that Pep, off, um, Pep offers sorry, as well. And also the player roles are slightly more sort of set to, to Pep, in my opinion, because obviously the side that Klopp brings, which is in the pressing, is you can control quite easily with like the higher tempo, for example, and also the trigger press and things like that. Now, again... I know people are probably going to be thinking Klopp is known for playing a high line, but it's not do it is doable, but I'm not comfortable really rolling it out on FM23. I don't really like playing a high line. So that's the only thing I'd say I personally tweaked and I would change to make it hundred percent more rep replicated in my opinion. But overall, that is going to be everything in possession, in transition and out of possession. So now it's the player roles. But before we do, sure to leave a like on the video subscribe right now we're simply hitting subscribe below and do turn on notifications which you can be done can be done which can be done by hitting the notification bell this way you're never going to miss an upload when i do a community post or when i go live you get a little notification on your phone computer whatever it is you got open and that will tell you when i upload some content but let's break down the player roles so i'm going to start off we're going to start from the striker downwards today. We're going to go with a complete forward on support, more direct passes, shoot more often, hold up ball, dribble more, take more risks, move into channels and run from position. On the left hand side, we've got an inverted winger on attack, aim the crosses at the center, run from position, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball and get further forwards. On the right hand side, we've got an inverted winger on attack, pass at shorter, aim the crosses at the center, run from position, tackle harder, dribble more, cutting sides with the ball and also get further forwards. 
pretty in midfield here. Um, we've got the anchor because it reminds me a bit of like a Fabino role, a little bit of, you know, just the blue or the Rodri, the Fabino, whatever you want, whatever play, you know, you prefer. That's an interesting comment. That's a good debate. Who would you have in your team? If you could pick one, Fabino or Rodri, who are you taking? Anyway, that, that's a little debate. I always like to cause some type of debate in the comments. We're going to start off with a Metzala on attack, dribble more, tackle harder, take more risks, get further forward, stay wider, move into channels and roam from position. A centre mid on support, dribble less, move into channels and tackle harder. And then the anchor, which we just discussed, on defend, close down more, tackle harder, shoot less often, dribble less, take fewer risks and hold position. For the left back, we've got a wing back and automatic, cross from deep, aim the crosses at the centre, get further forwards, run wide with the ball. On the right hand side, we've got a wing back and automatic as well. Um, cross from deep, aim the crosses at the centre, shoot less often, get further forwards and run wide with the ball. We then have a central defender on defend on shoot less often, dribble less and hold position. And next time we have a ball playing defender on take more risks and hold position. And that leaves us with one last player, which is going to be a sweeper keeper on ease off tackles and take more risks. But that is going to be the Jurgen Guardiola FM23 tactic. Obviously a fantastic combination of two of the best managers in the world, all combined into one tactic for you guys. Now you can copy it click for click, or if you want an alternative, as always, you can find this tactic on the FM Scout website, completely free to download. So I do appreciate anyone that does support by liking the video and subscribing. Although it is free, it does help the channel grow massively. That is going to be it for today, guys, and I will see you in the next one.